case today will be laparoscopic abdominal perineal resection with segment 6-7 weight resection. The patient is 81 year old male patient, free past medical history, underwent appendectomy in 1998, um, no history of drug allergy, and smoker with no history of colonic cancer. Two years ago, he started complaining of, from a pain fortification, sense of incomplete emptying, bleeding per rectum, and weight loss up to 30 kilos in the last six months, and diagnosed to have anorectal cancer, underwent a new adjuvant chemoradiotherapy outside our institution. After completing the new adjuvant course, he developed a clinical uh, uh, complete response for which he kept, kept on weight and weight uh, protocols. So follow-up colonoscopy done showed regrowth of the endorectal region just at the dentate line extending up to 5 cm and pathology came as a moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. While walking him up, CT scan showed a lesion in the segment 6-7 of the liver. This is the lesion here, it's about 2.7 by 2.1. Because you can view both the portal and the right hepatic vein, so uh, the lesion is in between of segment 6 and 7. The rest of the CT scan was unremarkable, there is no evidence of other liver or lung metastasis. The MRI was done and showed thickening in the posterior endorectal area, uh, which gave um, the impression of uh, regrowth of the tumor. This is the sagittal view also, where you can see the thickening at the posterior endorectal region. Again, um, give the impression of uh, uh, local recurrence of the tumor. A PET scan was done showed um, in the rectal region with single level metastasis, our MDC was to go for APR and segment 6 7 weight resection. This is to show you the position in the OR. We use the French position. The surgeon will sit in between the legs and the two assistants in each side. And remember that you need to fix the patient well by being back, shoulder support, because you're going to move the patient in all directions as you're going to work on the liver first, then you can go down to the pelvis. So make sure your patient is fixed well. Uh, and you can move him in all directions. This is our trocar site. We use Hassoon and Palakal port with um, four other ports to control um, the liver area. And then when we're going to move to the rectal part, we're going to show you how we can move one of the trocars to assist us in working in the pelvis. So let's move to our intraop finding. First of all, do expression laparotomy. For any evidence of peritoneal metastasis or any other surprises, you can find. Then we put our trokers under uh, full vision. As I said before, we used the Hassoon troker, then uh, we use uh, uh, two trokers in the abdomen so we can have a full access to the uh, upper abdominal cavity. So we'll start by taking down the falciform ligament. Just make sure you you, you take the falciform um, from the upper from the lower edge of the abdominal wall, so you don't have a redundant tissue in the front of your camera all the way. Continue taking down the falciform down toward um, the IBC. Here, once you reach the area where the IVC will be very close, um, the right and left triangular ligament leaves start to split, so you can take each one of them um, uh, alone. So now we're taking the, the right leaf of the right triangular ligament, and uh, this is the left one here.
um, continue your dissection of the right triangular ligament as much as you can from above that will help you a lot when you come from below but be careful because the right phrenic nerve as you can see it here and the right hepatic vein is very close now taking the adhesion from the undersurface of the liver Just take all these adhesions so you can retract the liver, avoiding um, getting a capsular injury. Um, the patient received treatment before um, the age, the steatohepatitis from obesity sometime will make your liver very flimsy and easy to bleed. Complete the mobilization from the undersurface of the liver. Be careful, the IBC is very close here. Um, and um, now moving to the angle of the liver at segment 6, you need to mobilize this area so you can start attracting the liver toward the left and mobilizing the right triangular ligament of the liver. Here, if you're going to bleed, you just use the cautery. Put it on a 70 coagulation and just you can control it. Now we are retracting the liver toward the other side. Start mobilizing the right triangular ligament. Just keep mobilizing the, the, the liver until you reach the area you start mobilizing it from the above here. Yeah? And the idea of mobilizing the liver is just to bring the posterior segment of the liver, which is usually lying posteriorly, to be in front of you so you can um, uh, start dissecting the tumor and control any bleeding if something happens. Here we reach the area we reached from above, so now the liver almost completely mobilized from the diaphragm. Now mobilizing the inferior surface of the liver here, the IVC medially, and you can see the adrenal gland here, so just be careful not to get uh, on a bleeding. Now in order to localize the tumor, we use an, an ultrasound, endoscopic ultrasound. Now you can see the tumor area here. So we start our demarcation ultrasound guided just to make sure we can have a free margin. Now we are demarcating the uh, under surface of the, of the liver and we now doing that in order to control the hilum of the liver and I usually don't use it in my open cases but in laparoscopic I think it's very important because it's going to be your reserve in, in case you need to control bleeding
now we start uh, cutting through the uh, capsule of the liver as I said before uh, I like to cut the capsule using a, a cautery at uh, uh, 70 uh, coag and then we use um, the bipolar ligature to cut through the liver parenchyma As I said in previous movies, uh, always keep a 4x4 uh, standby because uh, most of the bleeding from the liver will be venous at low pressure. So, packing with the 4x4 would be very helpful on stopping the bleeding and uh, continue your work. Here we are going more toward the liver parenchyma where we can find the major vessels so we need to control them uh, in order not to get any, in any bleeding. Always try to be um, cutting layer by layer so you will not put yourself in a hole. So if you get a bleeding, then you can control it easier. You just want to make the legion with a good margin now we are washing the surface of the liver and we're gonna put a white gauze just for hemostasis and bilostasis just to make sure we don't have any bile leak so now putting the liver back to its normal position then you need to move one of the troker toward the right lower um, quadrant area so you can deal with the pelvic um, part of the surgery. First of all, you will like to mobilize the attachment of the omentum and to put the omentum above the transverse colon. As you can see here, so you can have a space where the small bowel should lie. Now you need to put the position, the patient head down and the left tilt so the bowel will be away from your area of dissection. This is the ligament of trites area, just mobilize this uh, attachment will give you a better uh, exposure to the area So here the anatomy um, you should start just above the sacral promontory about one centimeter to get from mediolateral um, 
approach to uh, to the mesentery of the um, sigmoid. Um, the important structure we're going to face is the iliac, uh, common iliac artery, external iliac artery, then the, the ureter. Here we are controlling the inferior um, mesenteric artery just one centimeter from uh, aorta, and the aim is to avoid injuring the hypogastric plexus of the patient. Now we are dissecting the retroperitoneal area where we can find the gonadal and uh, the uh, ureter. Now we are moving toward the pelvic area and um, you need to cut the pelvic reflection um, as you can see it here. Here, try not to go deep at the reflection. You just need to be one centimeter above. Uh, this is the best plan, plane you can find where you, you can find the seminal vesicles um, and uh, the uh, vast difference area. Now we are um, uh, taking the attachment of the sigmoid colon uh, the white line at the left side. Always try to be close to the colon so you will not get to the retro um, the area. Here we are continuing. Um, we could, we are continue to take the attachment of the sigmoid colon. The 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 left ureter will be very close, and you need to be very careful while while dissecting this area. Again, you need to stay in the peritoneal reflection just one centimeter above um, the reflection area so you will be in the same plane you took from the right side and this will make it easier to you to find the seminal vesicle and um, the bus. Now we are joining the two areas of the section we took from mediolateral and lateral area. This is the ureter just underneath you, so just make sure uh, to be careful while dissecting this area. So here the ureter. So this is the structures again here as the ureter, the gonadal, and the external iliac artery. This is the ureter. So now trying to continue that section to the pelvic area, just try to keep um, the area between uh, 12 and um, between 2 and 11 o'clock uh, intact so uh, you avoid rotation of the um, rectum. Now we are joining the anterior um, reflection we took from the right and left side. Now we are moving to dissecting the posterior area uh, in the presacral uh, you can see the yellow and um, white area just stay on the yellow area so you can avoid injuring the presacral venous plexus and getting uh, away from bleeding keep dissecting um, 
down on the pelvic area. Continue the dissection downward toward um, the coccyx and just make sure when you reach to the widest area of the rectum, we call it the ampulla of the rectum, to start moving with the section upward with the curvature of the sacrum and the coccyx, otherwise you're going to get no bleeding. Now move toward the anterior part. You can see the vast difference here joining the seminal vesicle. Here is the bus. Yeah, this is the bus here. The more you're gonna do from um, upper part, it will make your dissection from the perineal area easier and faster. And remember, here you can, with, especially with the laparoscope, you can see better. A lot of edema, as you can see here, due to the previous radiotherapy. Now continue dissection anteriorly from the left side. Now, after we finish the pelvic part from the abdominal area, now we need to cut um, the uh, sigmoid at the junction with the transfer uh, with the descending colon in order to uh, use it as a, a terminal uh, colostomy. Now using the endo GI stapler uh, to transect uh, the colon at the descending sigmoid junction. After we're going to finish this, we're going to move to the perineal area and doing the uh, perineal resection. Um, as I said, we finished most of the job from above, so we just need uh, to um, resect this to, 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 to incise the skin and then uh, to uh, open the uh, big floor. Here I'm thinking um, uh, that the stoma will reach the abdominal wall easily without any uh, tension. After we finish the perineal part and we um, we talk the the, the, the rectum and the sigmoid through a trans uh, um, uh, rectal perineal incision. Now we are um, putting the, the liver specimen in a bag and we're going to take it uh, in the same way trans uh, pelvic through the perineal incision. Now we are taking the specimen, as I said, through the perineal incision to avoid doing any skin um, or abdominal uh, funnel steel or anything like this. Now we are checking our um, liver um, specimen to check for the margins. We have a circumferential. After we finish, I put a, a, a ready vac a drain through the perineal incision. Um, Now going back to the liver to check for a bile leak, we have a minor uh, peripheral bile leak there. 
washing extensively to make sure we don't have uh, any other area of bile leak and to ensure the hemostasis also. We're applying a uh, um, flow seal glue at the at the bile leak area. I don't use it routinely for hemostasis, um, and and don't use uh, uh, Certicel or uh, Febrilar routinely unless if I think um, there is an oozing area. After that, we're gonna take the print out. I usually place drain a uh, ready vac drain, J vac drain uh, at the pelvic area also. This is the abdominal wall after surgery. As you can see here, we have the um, uh, trochers, and uh, this is the side where we're gonna uh, take the colostomy out. This is the specimen uh, post op. You can see. Uh, the anus, the rectum with complete mesorectal excision, the inferior mesenteric artery with the lymph nodes. So basically the patient underwent laparoscopic abdominal brain resection with segment 6 slash 7 with resection. The OR time was 310, the blood loss 350 ml. The pathology came back as residual viable invasive moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma T3 and uh, 0. M1 and the liver segment was metastatic uh, adenocarcinoma with a free margin. So what is the take home message from such a case? We're going to talk first uh, about the watch and way technique. As you know, our patient treated with a new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy and he get a clinical um, complete response approved by biopsy and he uh, kept on uh, watch and wait technique unfortunately he lost the uh, the follow up and that's why he came back with a recurrence and liver metastasis um, but fortunately we could um, uh, catch him and we could salvage um, his surgery for uh, APR and uh, liver resection so what is the tool we can use um, for a watch and wait um, technique follow up I think the most important one is your finger. A digital rectal examination done by an expert surgeon is very important. You cannot consider any patient for what and wait uh, uh, follow-up if he um, or if his BR showed a, a, a rectal wall irregularity, a mass ulceration, or a stenosis. The second modality we can use is the endoscopy and um, frequent endoscopic uh, finding consistent with the clinical uh, CR, uh, no residual mass ulceration or stenosis, whitening of the mucosa and telangiectasia. Other than this, if you have um, a mass, uh, if you have an ulceration, stenosis, or um, if you if you have a hardness, uh, this is considered as incomplete response. I would like now to talk about uh, terminology. Uh, you can find it in the uh, MRI report, for example, as a near complete response, which is an, um, uh, uh, an area just before the complete response. Uh, as you can see here in the images, uh, this is the patient eight weeks after new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy and uh, we um, uh, watch him for another three months and you can see uh, the whitening in the mucosa which I, uh, as I said before we can consider it as uh, uh, a complete response. The other case um, uh, with uh, waiting for more uh, uh, three months we can see the, the growth overgrowth of a mass which uh, considered as uh, a, a, a incomplete response and uh, the second patient will take him to surgery. So if you have a patient with near complete, uh, you can wait more up to uh, 12 uh, weeks and sometimes you can go 
more especially if you have a low rectal tumor and the cost will be a terminal colostomy as long as your patient is compliant and he will be in a strict follow-up the other modality on assessing the response is taking a full thickness biopsy and uh, this is suitable for lesion um, uh, less than three centimeters a low-lying lesion and no evidence of mesorectal uh, dissemination in a form of uh, lymph nodes. The unfavorable uh, pathological finding after uh, full thickness um, excision or excisional biopsy is YPT3, lymphovascular invasion or positive resection margin. And if you have any of those, then you're going to advise your patient to go for surgery. No more watch and wait for him. If you got uh, YPT1 or early YPT2 uh, rest restricted to the superficial muscular layer, no lymphovascular invasion, negative margin more than 5 mm, and radiologically staged as uh, YC and 0, then you can continue follow up for such patient. The other modality for sure is the radiological image in a form of MRI and PET scan. Um, MRI um, in an excellent hand where you have an expert radiologist can give you an accurate result especially by using a diffusion weighted technique so low density um, signal intensity replacing the area of previous tumor no detectable abnormalities uh, absence of restriction to diffusion and no residual cancer in the mesorectum all these can be a sign for a complete response and EOS also can be an important modality. As you can see here, um, EOS will show you um, the tumor thickness, um, the, the absence of the tumor cells, and also can examine the lymph node in the mesorectum. A PET scan is also a, a, a good modality, and you may use it. As you can see in um, picture A, you can see the tumor um, at, the, at the rectal area and uh, the absence of the tumor after new adjuvant chemo radiotherapy in the picture B. So in summary, after uh, uh, getting a patient with rectal cancer, the standard of care now to send him for new adjuvant chemo radio and we usually wait um, 8 to 12 weeks after uh, the last dose of radiotherapy in order to let the um, effect of radiotherapy uh, to work and to avoid getting through a massive edema um, due to the radiotherapy treatment and the trend nowadays to go even for uh, what we call a TNT total new adjuvant treatment to take all the uh, chemotherapy before um, going to surgery so after assessing the response you have one of three scenarios the first scenario is the CR the complete response as you can see here and um, you have um, uh, all the modalities to confirm it starting by your um, uh, PR examination as I, I mentioned before the MRI the endoscopy the biopsy if you get uh, uh, the CR response then you can put your patient in the watch and wait technique the second option or we call it a near complete response if you got um, such a um, uh, a case then you can wait for another three months and you need to inform your patient that uh, he need to be compliant with the visits and uh, to do the examination yourself um, and if you get a complete response then you can put your patient in a watch and wait technique and uh, if um, uh, the tumor um, regrowth at the area then the patient need to go back to surgery the third option we have is to have incomplete response and in that scenario there is no room for watch and wait and patient should go straight for surgery. So uh, what's the scenario if you have a local recurrence and uh, the probability of salvaging the patient? Uh, you have two types of air, uh, recurrence, early regrowth which can happen in the initial 12 months and late recurrence uh, after 12 months. Um, the early regrowth 
can happen up to 19%. The late recurrence in um, 11%. You can see that we can um, uh, go for salvage surgery in around 94% uh, for the regrowth and 91% and the late recurrence but um, the advantage that we can preserve the sphincter is higher in the early growth and the patient uh, they will have late recurrence after 12 months the probability that we can preserve a sphincter is 35 uh, percent uh, uh, so these need to be clear for the patient and uh, one of the criteria to go for watch and wait that you need to select the proper patient that he can extract and compliant with all um, uh, the close observation and examination so once you get the recurrence or the regrowth you can interfere and you can solve the patient now we're going to talk about the systematic recurrence uh, the distal metastases have been reported in 14 percent with patient of uh, clinical complete response, 18% uh, of patient with local recurrence, and 13 patient of patient without even local recurrence. And in our patient, um, this case, he has a, a, a recurrence in the rectal area with a systematic metastasis. And uh, this uh, may further emphasize the opportunity for adjuvant chemotherapy in patient with clinical complete response, which is not um, clear uh, for our uh, medical oncologists uh, yet so we need more studies to confirm the need of uh, adjuvant chemotherapy after a, a clinical complete response so finally um, you need to make sure to have a proper selection for the patient who uh, developed a, a complete clinical response and by examination, by endoscopy, by imaging, and the most important that to choose the patient that he will be able for to follow the close follow up and compliant with it. Otherwise, if um, the patient get missed, uh, maybe we we'll lose the opportunity to salvage his um, tumor. And uh, usually, I inform my patient. I don't like it. I don't like to call it watch and wait. I like to call it watch and worry. Uh, finally, and um, as usual, I hope you can find something to learn. Uh, please feel free to contact me on my email or um, to comment on my YouTube channel or uh, Facebook uh, for any comment, question or uh, uh, feedback. Uh, and for sure, to watch more videos, please uh, visit our YouTube channel um, as it's shown here where you can find different kind of um, surgical oncology cases. Um, thank you for watching.